here five minutes, I would think. Five, ten minutes. Just to let everyone know, this isn't going to be as formal as the first one. This is going to be just a quick update of what uh, we saw in the Senate Covenant.
Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist will talk to you as well. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, we're just going to give a quick update, not as formal as the last one with the same information. I'm just going to give a few updates we have from uh, Consumers Energy. Uh, before they're making great headway out there, there's a lot of great effort going on out there. We just toured Lieutenant Governor and I and uh, got the look, first hand look of all the citizens out there and the great work being done by our first responders. Uh, initially, we had about 6,500 people without power. We've got that number down to 3,900. And uh, no outlying areas are affected at this time before we had 87 residents. And this previously we had 34% without power and we've knocked that down to 21% or the consumer's energy has. So uh, great work by them. Also, eFree Church continues to uh, help with the people there. They have pallets of food. There's been so many donations going out to the Red Cross. So if anybody's in need, please go out to the eFree Church. They will be happy to diapers, uh, food, uh, hygiene products. They have more than enough for everyone who's in need. Uh, currently, we, went, we did add one person from 11 to 12 out there that's currently staying at the shelter. Uh, again, we, we have the facilities we need. We appreciate that and all the uh, support from the community. Um, right now, we're in the process of trying to open up the 282 exit from I-75. We believe we can do that. There's Most of the lights are working there. The power is coming back on with all the work along that area. Uh, one thing I would like to announce, um, we're starting and activating the 211. And what the 211 is on your cell phone, if you dial 211, it'll get to, get to a resource and they can help you with what's available in the area. They'll give you things such as the eFree Church, the contact information, other things that are available to assist people in the Gaylord region that need help. Also, you can self-report damage assessment of your home. A lot of people might not have internet access, but through 211, there's going to be a live person manning the phone in Michigan who can go to the app and they will walk the person through so they can report the damage and what they need to do so we can help with our FEMA and the recovery efforts. Efforts, excuse me. So with that being said, uh, 211 has been activated and uh, you know, we just really appreciate all the outpouring and support from our community. Well, what's been happening, and, and we're not going to respond to everybody's been accounted for, because what happens is we'll find that a person, but we'll get another phone call of a loved one, another one. So it still hasn't gone beyond one person, but every phone call we've gotten so far, we've located that person, but we still continue to cause. And until we have everyone accounted for, uh, we, we just want to encourage people to still report, and uh, we will continue looking for that as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Lieutenant uh, Governor for some comments, and you're welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it was important, I think, to, uh, I, I want to thank all of the first responders, uh, all of the first responders who've come from so many communities across northern and central and every corner of Michigan to come and support uh, this community here in Gaylord. Um, Governor Gretchen Whitmer and I, the entire state of Michigan, are praying for every single soul that has been impacted here, every family. Um, to those who have been injured, we have 44 Michiganders who've been injured. We have two Michiganders as that we're aware of who have uh, lost their lives as the result of this tornado. And so we are, we are praying for them. We want them to know uh, that everyone in Michigan is gonna wrap our arms around those families and everyone who is working together to recover here. I had a chance to uh, come and survey um, some of the damage and the debris that's happened through a really wide area. Um, this storm went a lot of places and did a lot of damages, hit a lot of homes, the commercial corridor, 
fun. Um, it's, it really was quite remarkable. And so to be able to, um, <clears throat> so I want to thank the state police for um, being so supportive and making sure that we can understand and wrap our arms around the scale um, about the challenges so we can now direct resources to people who need them in this community to make sure that we can uh, recover, that we can build, that we can uh, come forward stronger together. One thing that's true about the people of Michigan is that we have each other's back. We've seen people already uh, step up, not just for their family members. We've seen, we're going to see volunteers from every single corner of Michigan are going to come here. And um, as, as the commissioner said, by the time everybody gets here, the, the local community might have already taken care of all the business. But the truth is we're not going to turn our backs and we're gonna make sure that uh, folks have everything that they need so that we can be successful in this community coming forward. Um, you know, I think, I just wanna make sure that everyone recognizes uh, what the trooper said in terms of resources. So we will do everything we can to make sure resources are available at the scale they need to be. So the 211 being unlocked is really important. We really encourage people to call that resource, uh, to report folks who may still be missing, to report the damage to their homes, um, if you have an emergency, please do call 911. We're working hard to make sure the lights are back on, the internet's back running, that our phones are going to be working. Uh, make sure to check in on the people you know, check in on all your family members, your neighbors, your classmates. Um, again, because this is about coming together, because we're going to be able to come through this stronger um, by, by the work. So know that Governor Gretchen Whitmer and I are going to be focused. Uh, the emergency declaration means that we have unlocked every resource in state government to be able to make sure that this community will have what it needs and we won't spare any expense to make sure that it happens. Um, the donations that have been coming in of everything from food to baby formula to diapers, um, we're gonna make sure that folks have everything that they need because that's what we do. We have each other's back, we stick together, we stand tall for one another and um, we're gonna be able to come through this. And I hope that just like we've seen tremendous progress in the last 24 hours, that in the next 48 hours, um, hopefully this community <clears throat> will continue to feel the love from everyone in Michigan. So um, I appreciate folks continuing to pay attention and keep their eyes on Gaylord. I hope that's where we can keep their hearts focused on Gaylord, to keep their prayers focused on the community here in Gaylord, and we will get through this together. So uh, thank you. We can take any questions. <laughs> It remains at two. So we haven't had any further questions. Well, thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Can I hear your name real quick? Derek Carroll, D E R R I C K C A R R O L L. Okay, and your title? Lieutenant, Public Information Officer, State Police. And where, where can people go? Right now, we're directed to the E Free Church where their Red Cross is set up, and that's also where the 211, as the Lieutenant Governor said, call 211. Any resources available, they can direct you to where you're at, what location. Because it's in various parts of the city right now where things are at. Like when we drove around to ATT, was handing out free water. Mm -hmm. uh, so different businesses have things set up, and people have registered with them. So that's the way to go. Sorry, I might have missed this this morning, but I'm spelling is it just E Free Church? E dash free. Mm -hmm. e just, <laughs> yep, like it sounds. And then are, are people being put up in local hotels or are they having to drive other places, get rides other places? To a lot of stay? hotels in the area have uh, put people up for free and then the Red Cross has set up the shelter at uh, E-Free Church and they, had, they have 12 people there. How, how many spaces do they have available? I don't have a number of spaces. They have, they have we had, uh, upwards of 30 there last night and uh, that dwindled down to 11 and now we're at 12. And that's 12 expected. Expected, expected for tonight right now. Okay. Do you know, are all 44 people still in hospital? That I don't know. I, I don't have the status of each individual person. A lot of HIPAA prevents us from calling and getting information. <coughs> as, as a part of the uh, state emergency, is the National Guard uh, We haven't had that requested this time. Okay. Are there any more issues with the hospital that you know of? I don't know the exact status of the patients right now. We did divert to the local area hospital that's up as far away as Traverse City. The power is back on, they were on generator, uh, running on that. They, they did have some issues at the beginning, like every other business and home around the area. And the diversions to other hospitals were just because of the concern about the, power? 
just the bed space in northern Michigan, you're, you're limited to what you can. And, and all these hospitals, they have agreements with each other. And the ambulance services, as soon as they start filling up one ER, they'll, we have this many beds left, and they'll start going to the other hospitals. And they prioritize where they're going to put people as well. All right. Thank, thank you very much. much.